What's going on, everybody? It is January 12th. We've got a nine-game slate. Yesterday's uh, awful slate is behind us now. Um, yeah, didn't really go well for me, but whatever. <laughs> I, I didn't expect it to. It's a crapshoot on nights like that. Um, who would have expected the Raptors to win by 30 and DeMar DeRozan to be... Like, not really a part of that 30-point game. But Siakam played well. I'm just happy about that one. Diving in now. Nine games. Uh, let's just get into it. First up, Hornets and Jazz. Hornets, 105.75 implied total, which is 13th on the night. And I don't think that I'm going to have a single guy from Charlotte, based on what I'm seeing here. Um, assumption is that Derek Favors plays, so that doesn't necessarily mean much for the Hornets. I don't think there's anybody to play on FanDuel from the Hornets. I think that you can probably entertain a little bit of Dwight on DK. Um, but barely. The prices are just not, not where you need them to be. Go to the U. Like I just, it's, sometimes there's just nobody there. Go to the Jazz now. Jazz 101.75 implied total, which is 16th. So you know, obviously, this is not a high-level fantasy game from a, from a total perspective. <sighs> which is good because now I don't. I have to even think about watching it. All right, so definitely liking Mitchell. Am I crazy there? A little bit. Yeah, no reason to think that, that that he wouldn't have a decent game. Dono, Mitch. Guys, it's Friday. It's been a long week. I think he looks good on both sides. Um, you know, it's the pretty crappy game, so it's a three for me. But I would want to have a little bit of him. Just He just dominates the ball. It's hard to get past that sometimes. Uh, Joe Ingles. Uh, this isn't necessarily the game. Well... He just doesn't ever do anything from a fantasy perspective. He doesn't shoot, which is kind of essential. What's he been doing lately? So we need him to get to 25, 30, somewhere in that area. And he can, you know, consistently in the mid-20s, but there's just not enough upside there. I'd rather just miss on him. Favors, 6,000 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that on FanDuel. I don't think I need to force it on DK. Rodney Hood, though, 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. He needs to get to like 25. Why doesn't he? 15 minutes in the last game. 15 points. Oh man, he is just, he's very boom bust. Um, I'm okay with that. And then Rubio on FanDuel at 5,100, sort of the same level. Uh, I like that a lot actually. Well, not a lot, but I think that I'll, uh, you know, have a set a max of one Jazz guy in a lineup and just let those guys rotate through. I don't really expect them to pop up all that much. There's some, uh, they're just filler tonight. To the Pacers we go. Pacers hosting the Cavs. Uh... Cavs two point or one and a half point favorites in Indiana. 
Um, going to be an interesting game, considering the Cavs are in a bit of a slump. They got embarrassed last night in Toronto. Uh, this could be pretty tricky for them. No Miles Turner. Let's grab the NBA Wowie data, data on that. <clears throat> I mean, we're going to want Sabonis one way or the other, but I'd like to see the impact of, uh, of not having Turner, which I'm sure I've looked at, but my brain is um, not something that retains information for very long, unfortunately. So we look at Turner with... And we look at Pacers without. So not much change for Thad. And it's actually worse for Collison and Oladipo, which I find interesting, but Big jump to the performance of Corey Joseph and Sabonis. Um, so looking at Oladipo, who is 9,500 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK, it's a good game. He, it's not the best price. You need him to get to... I mean, basically, 50 is your goal for Victor Oladipo. Uh, he's been back for three games. One big 50-point game, one 45-point game, one 35-point game. The ingredients are there for this to be a good game. I just don't think the price is there. It's a little bit too high. I think he's... I would not disregard him. But he's a four for me. Um, I'll take whatever lineups he shows up in, but I'm not going to expect, based on his projection score, I'm not expecting him to even show up. Uh, Sabonis, on the other hand, who not as cheap on FanDuel as I would have expected. He's uh, 7,100 on FanDuel. 6,400 on DK. Um, he's a two for me on DK pretty clearly. You know, he's probably just a two across the... Oh, wow, he might even be a one. It's not a good matchup, though. Although, with the way that the Cavs just got eaten alive in the paint tonight, or last night... He might be just a straight two, and maybe he might be a two on FanDuel and a one on DK. I can't imagine not having like 75% of him. He needs to get. He needs 30. Okay, on DK, he needs like 39 for 6x, which is almost his projection. Um, he can certainly get there. He's a one for me on DK. I'm going to have basically an unlimited supply of him. Pace is up. They're the fifth highest pay or the fifth highest implied total. Uh, you know, ton of good work by the Raptors yesterday in the paint. You'd like to think that um, Sabonis will have a similar outcome. You know, he takes 56% of his shots at the rim. I like it. I'm okay on Thad. Uh, I'm a, I would have a lineup with Bogdan just because of how many threes uh, the Cavs give up. I wouldn't take him on FanDuel. I think he's a DraftKings play. It's probably just a three. Um, Corey Joseph needs 24 to hit 6x on DK. He's been, you know, he gets nine in a game, but he also gets 30 or 28. Um, 
shoot some threes, which is okay. I'd, I'd be okay with having a Corey Joseph lineup as well. That's more of a three. Yeah. And that's probably it for me there. Yeah. Now to Cleveland. Cleveland on the back-to-back. 112.25 implied total, which is fourth. What am I doing? All right, Cavs. Uh, no Isaiah Thomas tonight. Um, he, what did he finish from the field last night? I don't know if he got back in. He was like one of 12 or one of 13 or something really awful at one point in time while I was watching. And then, you know, it was a 30-point game and I shut that shit off. What did he finish? 2 of 15 from the field. Whew. Minus 20. Ugh. Should have played Kevin Love more. Only minus 10. That was just a brutal, brutal beating. Fred Van Vliet. Just shooting the damn lights out. It was ridiculous. A bench lineups. Siakam... Powell, Pirtle, Van Vliet. Thank God Valanciunas got in foul trouble. 15 and 18 in 19 minutes. I just, that's an, and he was plus seven. Like, that's an asinine game. All right, to the Cavs. Um, so you would think LeBron James would want to have a huge one here, but I mean, he's 11-5. That's, you know, 60-plus fantasy points. He's had two straight games in the 30s. Three of his last four. I don't... I, I don't want any LeBron James tonight. That is a tricky thing to say. How does LeBron normally do against Indiana? I just wish the game itself wasn't such an like an interesting matchup for him from a pace perspective. So he's had 60 60 plus fantasy points two 80 point fantasy games against the Pacers playoffs though but two 60 point fantasy games against him this year so I, I'm not gonna I can't. he's LeBron James if there were more signs that pointed to this being a negative that'd be fine um, I wouldn't seek him out though that's a lot of salary on a nine game slate for a you know, he just simply hasn't been himself at that price point. But the price is the key takeaway here. If LeBron was 10-8 or 10-7 or something like that, sure. Um, but he's not. So I'm, I'm just not interested. Uh, JR, no thank you. Kevin Love is 7,100 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. I think he's in a really good spot to... Um, to bounce back. You know, it's got to be better for him to not have Miles Turner out there. He's much better on FanDuel, though. I'd say FanDuel 3, DK 4. I cannot believe they got their asses handed to them like that last night. Um, that's probably it for me. Uh, Isaiah not playing doesn't matter all that much. It, his minutes just go basically directly to Jose Calderon. So To the Wiz, Wizards 114.5 implied total, which is third, hosting the Magic, 10-point favorites. Um, I'm actually a little anxious to see this. I'm hoping that there are some interesting prices here because this would be a, a good spot to, to load up on studs. I haven't had a lot of... Uh, whiz this year and we might be able to so let's see 
Beal is eighty five hundred on FanDuel, eight thousand on DK. Um, so we need forty eight would be a fun score for Bradley Beal. Two in the thirties. And then three straight games, 48 or higher. No reason to suspect he couldn't have a big game here. Um, I'd be fine with having a decent chunk of Bradley Beal. Wall is 10-3, which that is a gigantic salary for John Wall. 10-3 on FanDuel, 9-4 on DK. Um... So you're looking for, and like 50-something plus. He's been on a bit of a heater. Last five games, 62, 43, 53, 45, 53. Um, not a lot of point guard defense out there. I, I like Wall as well. Um, and I think he's a straight two. Um, and I think that they correlate pretty well together. I'll check labs and I'll check uh, fantasy five by five. <laughs> yeah, decent correlation on fantasy five by five is the same here. It's not negative. That's pretty much all that matters to me. So, yeah, I'd like to have a decent amount of ball and, or wall and beal. Otto Porter, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Man, this fucking team feels like a trap. Uh, so, Porter would need 36 to hit 6x on DK. 35 on FanDuel for 5x. Um, can certainly get there. I, I have no reason to suspect he couldn't. He's a, he's probably, uh, I can't have that much whiz. He's a three on DK. He's a four for me on Fandle. I want one as much. Um, and then, you know, if you want to have Gortat on Fandle, that totally makes sense to me. He's 4,500. He's been playing a couple extra minutes lately, too. Um, that all looks good to me. You know what? He's probably just a three across the board there. Nah, he's a four. To the magic now. Uh, 104 implied total is 14th. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be super interested in this. I assume that unless there are major salary changes, Aaron Gordon's going to look not so good. Seventy one hundred on FanDuel for Gordon. Seventy seven hundred on DK. I won't have him at all on DraftKings. Um, yeah. Man, if you wanted to have him on FanDuel, I could see the argument. That's probably it. Now, never Google is 5,500 on both sites. So you're looking for 30. We're going to want at least 30 from him. 30 in the last one was a bit of a stretch without it. I don't love it, but not, he's not a disregard. It's just not a really good game for them. I don't need any Biombo, Peyton. I'm good on the rest of the Magic. <clears throat> we'll go to Atlanta now. Hawks hosting the Nets. 107.25 uh, implied total for the Hawks would be 11th. 
Man, it's a dreadful game. I feel like they play every day. How much have they played? I can't one I need one hawk. Yeah, three times. Okay, this is going to be an interesting one. Forgot Brooklyn gives up a ton of mid-range stuff. So... Schroeder is 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Um, we need like 40 from him. Not had the upside, but I feel like Brooklyn would be a good spot for that. What I didn't even look at how he's done against them. He's just steady. I'm. Uh, it'd be hard to disregard that. So let's go with Shooter here. Um, just a three. Prince, fifty-eight hundred on Fanduel, fifty-five hundred on DK. You know, or mid thirties would be great. It's been in the twenties a lot. Has that ability to get up in the bigger numbers. If that total was a little bit higher, I'd be happier. Probably a three as well. I'm good on Ilyasova. Baysmore, 28 minutes, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Man, these prices on DK suck. You know, 30. He's up and down. I think this, you know... One of these guys is going to pop off. I think rotating those through might not be a horrible idea. And that's probably it for me there. But I'll have a sprinkle of those guys. Brooklyn now. Um, Nets. 103.75 implied total is 15th. I believe everybody's healthy. Damari Carroll expected to play, so... I'm guessing there's not going to be a ton to love here. Spencer Dinwiddie, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK, coming off of, uh, what, did he, what did he finish with? Yeah, 9.1 fantasy points in 26 minutes, coming off of a night where he had 54. What an exceptional swing. Um, I do like him here, though. He's probably just a three, though. It's not a great game. Only other guy I'd probably want to look at is Karis Levert. He is 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. This is a game where I'll have, like, little bits of everything, but in very small... Whoa, that should not be a two. That should be a three. But small doses... Nobody else out there right now. There's too many guys healthy. Not really sure how the minutes are going to shake out. We'll go to Milwaukee. Bucks hosting your Golden State Warriors. 109 implied total is 8th. This should be a fun game. No news on Curry right now. I assume he's playing. We'll see. Okay, so Giannis in a much better spot than LeBron. 10-8 in FanDuel, 10-5 on DK. He needs, you know, you're looking for 55 to 60. Not the best in his last two, but I'm hoping he uh, steps up into this one. Nothing wild. Uh, you know what, on DK, it's, it's actually not horrible, but... Still just a three. Again, I'm, you know, can't go too crazy here. Middleton. I 
I'm not wild about. I prefer... Uh, man. I prefer Middleton to Bledsoe on FanDuel. I prefer Bledsoe to Middleton on DK, I think. Let's just get Malcolm Brogdon out of the way. Uh, he had a big one. 41 fantasy points in his last one. Um, I generally like a lot of Malcolm Brogdon. Today's not going to be any different. Eighth in pie top. I'm fine with Middleton. He's... Again, probably just a three. A lot of, a lot of guys... Nobody jumping off the page here. A lot of guys that are just functional. So far, it's really just Sabonis and the dudes from the Wiz. Which, you know, there are worse things than having, you know, those three guys in a core. You can only, have, you can only roster so many people. Um... I don't really want much of Bledsoe on FanDuel. I'd be much more likely to have him on DK. Warriors now. I don't even... This, this damn team. Thank God. What time is this game tip? 8 o'clock. We probably will have the news we need for this game. Um before lock otherwise it would have been really difficult <clears throat> alright Durant is 10-6 on FanDuel 10-2 on DK I don't love it Clay 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Man, I don't really like any of this. I need to think about this a little deeper now because I'm not super fond of anything I'm looking at. Um... I think Draymond is the only guy that like I really have an interest in. Ten six or ten two for Durant. I mean, Curry's been exceptional in, like, short-minute games recently, but to get over, you know, like, missed the most recent game because of the tweaked ankle and warm-ups. He's in Milwaukee. He's 10000 in salary. I don't... They're the number two implied total, so it's silly for me to, like, ignore it, but... I don't like the prices of any of these guys, and there's so much variability in whether or not they're going to play or not. It's hard to commit to any of it. I'm pretty confident in Draymond for tonight. I, you know, I might even be more confident than three. It might be two. Have they played it all this year? No. What's Durant's history against the Bucks like? Nothing interesting. I guess if I had to say, I would prefer Durant to Curry. But I don't expect him to show up at all. Yeah, I don't know. Minnesota. 110.5 implied total, hosting the New York Knicks. Uh, ten, I have them as 10-point favorites. It, that total is sixth. Um, I think there should be a little bit more value here. 
I assume Teague is playing, but it wouldn't shock me if he sat out. That was last Wait, no, that wasn't last night, was it? Nope, never mind. That's silly. I was thinking they were on a back-to-back. So Wiggins, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Starting to get a little bit warmer. He's had a couple, you know, 30 and 40 point fantasy games recently. Um, the Knicks do tend to limit mid-range shots. So I would hope that he would bomb some threes. But I'd be in, I'd be okay with entertaining a little bit of Wiggins. Again, like none of, nobody jumping off the page to me. Butler is 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. Coming off a 60-point fantasy game and a 50-point fantasy game. Um, but that price is just, that's a little prohibitive for me. Towns, though, 9,100 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. Um, so you're looking, you know, 50-plus for a big Towns game. Three straight in, like, the four, low th either high mid 30s or 40s but he's got that 60 something point upside I do want to see how he's been against the Knicks went for 80 last year I'm fine with it because of his price uh, I can't tell you That's probably it. I'm having a hard time putting down, putting together a short list. To the Knicks now, 100.5 implied total, which would be 17th. Kind of dreadful. Shock of all shocks. Liking Porzingis. What else is new? 8,400 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Um, I just, I can't get away from that price. Oh my god, I just cannot type today. Where's everybody else at on him? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I actually think it's a two. I, I mean, I'm not super worried about Minnesota. He's going to have a steady dose of towns, you would guess. I, so that's fine with me. I really like Porzingis. I do. No thanks on Courtney Lee. Definitely no thanks for Beasley on FanDuel. He is only in play on DK. Beasley's 7,300 on FanDuel and 5,900 on DK. That is, in, that is insane gap in price. And then Cantor, who ramping back up in minutes again, can't seem to figure this guy out. 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. I'm, he's, you know, Minnesota not the best rebounding squad. Cantor needs, tw he's 26 on FanDuel for 5x. I mean, he can do that shit in his sleep. Three straight games above 29. He's a 2 for me on FanDuel, and I know that probably sounds a little ridiculous, but if he's going to get, you know, I've got him set for 25 minutes. If he gets, if he hits that marker higher... He's in really good shape. I think he's probably the... I mean, like, he and Sabonis are probably the best center plays that I've seen. Is Sabonis the center on FanDuel? I feel like I should know that. It's just been so long. Now he's a power forward, because I had him recently. No, nope, that was two nights ago. 
My memory is shit, guys. Uh, Sabonis. Yeah, he's a power forward. Okay, yeah, so uh, I would definitely like rolling out some sort of Cantor Sabonis stack on FanDuel. Free for me on DK, but I would definitely want a little bit of him. Just, you know, there's there's enough variability in him on DK that at 5,800 I couldn't roll out like 70% of him. The rest of that looks good, though. Three games left. Pels and Blazers, uh, Pelicans, I have them as a one and a half point favorite at home against the Blazers with the assumption that Anthony Davis plays. Um, obviously, we're going to want to keep an eye on that. Hopefully, we get that news early. Um, it's a uh, eight o'clock start, so we should, but you never know. All right, so Boogie is 11,000 on FanDuel. He's 10-8 on DK. Uh, looks, you know, really good in my opinion. No issues with having a bunch of Boogie. Anthony Davis. 10-7 on FanDuel, 9,800 on DK. Um, I probably wouldn't have him on FanDuel, but I like the matchup a lot. But on DK, if I get word that he's playing, I'm going to have a bunch of him. I think it's an exceptional matchup for him. And the price at 9,800, uh, it's hard to beat that. If I, if I know he's playing... I'm good to go with it. If word is up in the air, you know, it's something that I'll ignore. Uh, particularly with Anthony Davis. It's not as if he's some guy who, you know, normally toughs through these things. This is a guy that gets dinged up pretty much daily. <laughs> so, Drew Holiday, 7,200 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. I mean, you're looking for 40 if you can get there. Lots of games in the 30s recently. Hasn't had a big breakout game. The Blazers could be a scenario where that happens, but I think there's just a little too much uh, price there for me to want to swing that bat. So we'll go to Portland. Uh, the expectation is that Dame plays. It's actually a game that I would really like to watch. I don't know why I'm typing in Timberwolves. Uh, wrong T team. DJ Strawberry's name popped up. There's a guy I haven't thought of in a long time. He's probably, like, old now, too. My age. I mean, not that he aged faster, but he wasn't that young, I don't think. Okay, CJ. 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. I don't super love it. You know, you need 45 or so at least. Three straight 40-point games, including one with Dame. Four straight 40-point games. Five of six. Seven of eight? No, six of eight? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six of eight in the 40s. You know, Pell's D is not exactly a world beater, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm okay with a little bit of CJ. Or if he showed up, at least, in the lineup, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be bummed. Dame, 9,000 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. I don't think that I would want him on FanDuel. Although... Rondo is a bit of a turnstile. You would need 45 on FanDuel for 5x. You know, if we can get to 50, which he did in this return, but he's missed so much time. The two games that he did come back for were in the 30s. I'm I wouldn't 
I wouldn't want him on FanDuel at that at that price. At DK, you know, if he pops up, he pops up. Aminu, somebody I normally have. Um, again, he's DraftKings only. At 4,400, he's just, it's interesting because of the amount of threes that he shoots. And then Nurkic, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. That's a pretty good price for him. I've got him projected for 33. You need him to get to, I don't know, 38 for 6x on DK. He had two 30-point games. He had a couple 45ers in here. Three 40-point games in his last eight. I know going against the two-headed monster isn't exactly awesome, but have they played at all this year? Or late last year, for that matter? Holy balls. He has been... Atrocious. All right, I'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit there. If he shows up, he shows up. But I don't. Maybe one lineup. <laughs> All right, last two games on the night. Nuggets hosting the Grizzlies. 107.5 implied total for the Nugs, uh, which was tenth. see what we got here all right so balanced shooting profile <clears throat> so we can go in many directions Jamal Murray 6800 on FanDuel 5800 on DK he's gonna be a one for me on DK but I want to see how bad he turns the ball over uh, Denver 28th in turnover rate Memphis actually ninth in defensive turnover rate so I didn't have to go there Where's turnovers? Okay, so he's in the middle of the pack of turnovers. So that that doesn't scare me at all now. Uh, so Jamal Murray is a two for me on FanDuel. And just to confirm, 58, so, you know, 35 would be a, a threshold that I would like Jamal Murray to hit. He's hit... He's had two 30-point games, a 40, and a 50 in his last seven. Um, it's the Grizzlies, so I'm not particularly worried there. Uh, as of right now, Jamal Murray looks awesome. I would like to have him in most of my lineups. Uh, okay, so the, the Nuggets DraftKings prices are a trap. Gary Harris is 7,000 on FanDuel and 5,800 on DK. I don't even know how I'm going to manage this. All right, Gary Harris, I don't I wouldn't even want him on FanDuel. On DK, if he were 6,000, he would need 36 for 6x. He had 44 in the last game. He's had two 40, basically 45-point games, a 35-point game, a couple in the 20s. Um, he's a straight two for me. And then this one will be the big one. Nikola Jokic, 9,300 on FanDuel. Not the best price. Um, I'll just enter that in right now that he's probably a three. Nikola Jokic. On DraftKings is 8,100. He needs 48 for 6x. He has two 45 point games, two basically 55 point games in his last seven. Uh, he's a one for me. I'm going to have a bundle of Jokic. How does he stack with Murray? Does it show up on Fantasy 5x5? Five Positive correlation there.
neutral on labs. I love it. That is a, an awesome, awesome spot. How good of an offensive rebounder is Jokic? So, mid-tier offensive rebounder, which is fine, though, because Memphis is one of the worst defensive rebounding teams. Jokic just looks exceptional. At 8,100, I mean, you're, I just want a bundle of him. Tenth implied total. It's you know it's not the best, but it's it'll work. The Grizzlies are the 18th, which is the worst for the night. Um, Wilson Chandler, five thousand on Fanduel, forty six hundred on DK. Again, I won't want him on Fanduel. I'd probably only want him on DK, and he's like a down the line guy. Same for Trey Lyles, sixty one hundred on Fanduel, fifty eight hundred on DK. You know you're looking for mid to high 30s for him he's been a revelation i haven't looked at his uh his advanced metrics at all has trey lyle's been as good as i think that he has been where is he in real plus minus What kind of order is this in? What is this sorted by to start? It's not alphabetical. It's not games or minutes or offense or defense or it's the, it's just not sorted. It's 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 random. Great. That's that's outstanding. So Trey Lyles is 19th in RPM. I'd imagine it's been a lot better lately. That's a great and that trade was looking like it was going to be a major problem. And if they're finding Trey Lyles to be this, like, stretch four guy with Jokic, I know this is a DFS uh, podcast or whatever the hell we want to call it, but, you know, it's basketball. Sometimes I want to look at this stuff uh, as we're going. So how have Jokic and Trey Lyles been when they're on the floor together? So as a team... The Nuggets are plus 1.2 points per possession. How are they when Jokic and Trey Lyles are on the floor together? In 460 possessions, they are plus 14.6 points. They have a 117.2 offensive rating. 97th percentile they have a 102.5 defensive rating 91st percentile they have been amazing with Trey Lyles and Jokic together wow that is something Murray, Harris, Chandler, Lyles, Jokic is plus 52 in 61 possessions. That's an interesting turn of events for the Nuggets. Particularly when Paul Millsap comes back. I'm really interested to see how that uh, works itself out. Because Trey Lyles is making a case that he should be on the floor with Nikola Jokic at almost all times. How were Jokic and Millsap together? 658. They were plus 11.7. Okay, so... Man, that's going to be tricky. Makes for an interesting rotation. Did, did Millsap and Lyles play together at all? I would imagine almost never. but Because Lyles didn't really play before that. Yeah, no. I wonder if they can play together. Interesting sort of small lineup when Jokic is off the floor. That'd be an interesting rotation. Okay, now that I'm off my uh, my Nuggets deep dive, let's go to the Grizzlies. Sorry about that diversion, but I just got really interested. It was invigorating. And mostly because I was trying to avoid having to look at the Grizzlies and their just dreadfulness. 
It's one thing if the Grizzlies aren't playing very well, but like, you know, you've got Gasol, you've got Conley, you respect it, but now it's just, they're just not good. And there's no, there's no Conley. Gasol is 8,400 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Um, you need him to get to like mid 40s to be happy. Two straight games in the 40s. Um, I would entertain a Mark Gasol lineup on DK. I would not on FanDuel. I don't think that I want Tyreek. 8,500 on FanDuel. 8,300 on DK. He clearly he has the ability to go off. Um, if it weren't in Denver, I'd be interested. But between this, the ability for this game to get out of hand and Tyreek at elevation, how has he been in his career in Denver? Strikes me as the type of guy that uh, wouldn't thrive there. At Denver, 24. At Denver, 25. At Denver, 51. Okay. 40, 60. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with fading at that price. James Ennis, I don't want. Andrew Harrison, I don't think I want. Well, 4,100, I can't just say no. Um, he's a FanDuel 4 and a DK 3. Let's get to this last game. Because this one's going to be a bit of a doozy. The Phoenix Suns are hosting the Houston Rockets. The Rockets are 7 point favorites in Phoenix. Obviously we know no James Harden for the Rockets. Also, no Nene. No Tarek Black. I think Zuchi or however the hell you say that, also out. So we're going to be looking at either Capella or a bunch of lineups with either Ryan Anderson or P.J. Tucker at the five. Now, also, Suns. No Marquise Chris. No Josh Jackson. Potentially no Isaiah Cannon. You got all that? It's lovely that this is the last game of the slate because there's going to be an overwhelming majority of value in this game that's terrifying me. Devin Booker is 7,800 on FanDuel. He is 8,200 on DK. You're looking for mid 40s for a big game out of Booker. Not exactly terrifying to get. Um, let's freeze this so I could scroll down. So I'm totally cool with Devin Booker. I honestly think that on FanDuel he's a a 2. He might just be a straight two. No, DraftKings, he's a three. Dragon Bender is 3,500 on FanDuel. Minimum salary. Expected to play 30 plus minutes. Uh, played 39 in his last one. They're on a ton of rest. And he put up 40 fantasy points in his last game. Um, I think that you need to have... A lot of Dragon Bender at minimum salary on FanDuel tonight. At least as of right now. <laughs> uh, I'm probably overreacting to that. Yeah, it's a two. He's not he's not good enough. <laughs> I don't care. It's a two. Um it's probably a, ugh. It's a three on DK. I'm overreacting to Bender. He's really bad. He's got to be one of the worst guys I have in my database. Where does he rank? Point three four five fantasy points per possession. 
He's right around guys like Paul Zipser, Connaughton, actually higher than Ryan Anderson, which is interesting to see. He's just not very good. I'm okay with that though. A minimum salary on FanDuel, there, you know, it's 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 not bad. TJ Warren now. Seventy five hundred on FanDuel. Sixty two hundred on DK. What? Come oh my god. It's Yeah. Uh he's a DK one for me. <laughs> He needs 36 for 6x on DK. He's had three games at that rate in his last five. The other two, both 5x games. I'm going to have an overwhelming amount of TJ Warren. And then, uh, is there anybody else I should look at? Tyler Ulis? No. Chandler? All right, so that's something to think about. Do the Rockets play Tyson Chandler off the floor? Mm. I think I'm good there. Let's go to... Let's go to Houston. This one's going to be weird as shit, too. Houston, oh, I, didn't, I don't think I hit the applied totals. 109.5 implied total for the Suns was 7th. 116.5 implied total for the Rockets. Numero uno. Trevor Ariza is 5,300 on FanDuel. He's 4,900 on DK. The Suns actually a really decent defensive team when it comes to stopping people from shooting threes. So I don't think that I would want like a ton of Trevor Ariza. The Suns put people on the line a lot. Rockets get to the line more than any other team. Um, so if Trevor Ariza popped up in a lineup or two, just because of this game scenario, I'd be okay with it. But that's it. Eric Gordon, who I need to give a slight boost to. Not going to matter, though. 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. You're looking for 40 out of him. Three out of his last four, he's been over 40. He's been good without James Harden. I don't want to go crazy on him as well. Uh, I'd want him a little bit more than, uh, than Ariza. But now we're going to get into the, the real meat and potatoes of the value here. Ryan Anderson, 4,300 on FanDuel. 4,600 on DK. So you're looking for him to hit like just under 30 would be like a crazy night for him. But probably going to play a ton or at least should play a ton. You need to have some Ryan Anderson in your life tonight. Um, I do get a little nervous about the amount of threes that they give up, but at the same time, they're also just not a good defense. You would expect Ryan Anderson to be gunning. I don't love this price. But his ability to shoot threes above the break uh, makes it a little bit more interesting. So he's a two for me. Either site at that price. Chris Paul, 10-8 on FanDuel, 10-6 on DK. I mean, in theory... He should eviscerate the Suns. There's no one on the Suns that is even remotely close to him. He needs 60. 68.9 in his last one. I, I, don't, I don't see how you can't want a bunch of Chris Paul tonight. Unless you're nervous about the blowout. Then P.J. Tucker... 
Um, I know we had this discussion a couple nights ago. He might have to play center, which is interesting. Have they done... I know that he's played center. I don't know if he'll show up here as the center or if it'll be Ryan Anderson. So let me see how they've been in P.J. Tucker center lineups. Hundred possessions. Oh my god. Alright, they've played a hundred possessions with uh PJ Tucker as the nominal center. They are plus forty seven. What? What? That is ridiculous. Look, I agree that PJ Tucker is not exactly going to be filling up the box score. Uh you know, he's an ancillary character, but for a guy that might play 30 minutes at minimum salary on FanDuel and at 3,500 on DraftKings, he's good filler. He had, like, again, I agree. He does not go crazy. He's, you know, 15, 14, 17, but I think he's going to see looks that he doesn't normally see. You don't want a lot of him, but... You know, maybe a lineup or two. And then Capella. My worry is that he doesn't get a lot of minutes and they just play small. But without anybody backing him up, the only thing that can really hurt him is foul trouble. Um, he's 7,600 on FanDuel. He's 7,100 on DK. You're looking for him to get to like 40... Uh, he's done that once in his last six. Mm, you know, hasn't had the best time lately, but at that price in his history, I want to see how everything looks without the blend. Yeah, he's just in an exceptional spot. Uh, he's a two as well. That's just a, a crazy game. So that's everything there. That is the short list. Now that I'm usually in the way, we can sort that. So if anybody wants to pause, all of this, all the short list stuff will be on the website with the projections. So I guess I don't need to do this anymore, but there's the short list. Let's go plug this into the optimizer and see where we end up. I'm already there. Upload. I'm excited for tonight now after seeing that. I think I have a, a decent handle. Uh, that's, nope, collapse. There we go. I think I have a decent handle on tonight. Now I'm getting excited to play. There's probably going to be some news that removes the, my confidence, but whatever. It's going to just be a ton of rockets. Alright, so if we do 20 lineups... Change the randomness to five. What do we get? Ton of Murray, ton of Anderson, a ton of Capella, ton of Sabonis, Jokic, Mitchell, Warren, Otto Porter. Yeah, I mean, Murray, Sabonis, Jokic, TJ Warren. Murray, Sabonis, Jokic, and TJ Warren. Like, that's that's going to be most of my core. And then, you know, whatever Rockets can fill in from there. I like it there. Let's see what we have on FanDuel. A little bit different on FanDuel. And I'm playing DK tonight, just FYI. Alright. 
20 lineups of FanDuel. Let's see what we get. Ton of Anderson. Booker and Bender makes total sense. Mitchell, a lot of Giannis. A split of Capella and Murray. It's going to be a good night, guys. I can feel it in my bones and in my plums. It's going to be a good one. I'm super pumped now. I wish that I could just fast forward the clock 12 hours. Well, not 12 hours, but enough hours until it's live before lock time. I will be live before lock tonight at 6. That is it for everything, guys. Um, you know, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Patreon. You guys know the drill. But I will be back tonight, 6 o'clock, for a Live Before Lock show. Until then, uh, best of luck.